So we here at Longador have a surprisingly large Discord server compared to what a small channel we are. It's constantly active, it's filled to the brim with inside jokes, and for the longest time people have been asking me to essentially make a video ranking their custom TF2 weapons. I was reluctant to as most of them were terrible, but after a good long while we finally got some good ones and enough for me to essentially make a video on them. Okay, this is going to be part 3 of thousands because we've had so many weapon suggestions. Before this begins, I have a couple of announcements to make. First, after this video goes up we are going to be locking the weapon suggestion channel as we've had over 200 submissions and I've only been able to cover 15 weapons. At this rate I'd need to make 20 videos before I've even scratched the surface. So. Thank you everyone for your weapon suggestions, thank you that you do want to suggest more, but please just hold off on them for a little bit. It's going to be locked for a couple days or until maybe I've made the next video. Second, these videos are going to start to get longer and longer as the more weapon suggestions we have, the more time I'm going to have to dedicate to them. Nothing's stopping you from skipping to see if your weapon's added and I'm completely fine with that if I'm honest. But if you'd like to watch the whole thing it would make me incredibly happy, but like I said you don't have to. And third. It seems that some people don't understand and I'm going to explain this again. Please do not DM me your weapon ideas on Discord. I do not want to see them in my DMs. We've had over 200 submissions. If everybody messaged me their ideas, I'd go insane. It seems that some people aren't capable of basically understanding simple rules. If you join our Discord server, you have to follow by the rules. Then we'd be incredibly happy to have you if you do. But it's stated in the rules that you do not DM me your weapon ideas. If you do, I will block you. You'll be kicked from the server. I know this sounds incredibly grumpy, but I have to say this as I've been getting so many DMs every day. We have a dedicated channel for it, the mods come over the channel, and they send me the best weapon ideas. Not everyone's ideas will be making into the videos, as most of them are terrible. So please, to reiterate, do not send me your weapon ideas on Discord or Steam or whatever it might be. You can leave them in the comments down below here, and that's fine, and maybe I'll make an entirely separate video dedicated to just the comment ones, as I've seen some pretty good ones from people who don't have Discord. But, do not DM me them, I will block you, you'll be kicked from the server, your weapon idea will not make it into a video. Sorry, that's really grumpy, but you can understand where I'm coming from. Wow, over two minutes of intro. Okay, well, we really just gotta get started with this one right now. The first weapon we're going to cover today is the Transforming Transfusion. In exchange for a whopping 66% less effective healing source from your medigun, your patient gains a lifesteal effect, essentially meaning that 40% of the damage they deal is returned to them as health. This thing has essentially a 1.5 times faster uber build rate, and your patient has a 10% damage vulnerability on wearer. When the uber charge is activated, your patient will gain 100% of the lifesteal, including overheal, and various other buffs. Note that these buffs do not stack with multiple uses of this weapon on one target. Jesus, I do not know what to think about this weapon. So this is either insanely strong or insanely bad. 25 health per second with the medigun minus 66% is going to be a shockingly low and difficult number to work with. However, your patient gaining 40% of the damage they deal back to them in health, as in the mad milk effect, is also incredibly good. The superiorly broken part about this is that this can overheal the patient, and when the charge is popped, it gains to 100% of the damage they deal is returned to them as health. Now, this is going to differ per class essentially, as for example, this would be incredibly good on Heavy or Pyro, but then someone like Demo, who has a very tight accuracy focused weapon base and a slow firing speed, is going to struggle a lot from this. For example, this could also change per weapon, like the stock scatter gun wouldn't work very well with this, however, the short stop would work incredibly well. So, at the end of the day, I really don't know how I feel about the transforming transfusion. It's such a cool idea, it essentially just gives your patient, you know, vampire powers. But I have a feeling it could be too strong on someone like Heavy and too weak on someone like Scout. So, I am going to put it in need of complete rework. It's a fantastic idea, but just as is, it will be so insanely strong on rapid fire classes like Pyro and Heavy, and pretty awful on ones like Scout or even Demo. The next weapon on our list is a secondary for the scouts, and I'm going to call it Claptrap because I cannot pronounce that first word. Clasp? Clasp? I can't pronounce it. So, this thing replaces the pistol, and you can put it down wherever you may go. The trap has 50 HP, and to get out of it, the enemy would have to destroy it. And whilst they're in it, they take continuous bleed damage. This has an initial 15 base damage, and the bleed only activates for one second after they've escaped from the trap. Only one trap can be placed at a time, and uber-charged targets can roll right through it. I love this idea personally, I absolutely love it. 
There's a character in Rainbow Six Siege. I don't remember her name. I think she's an artist or something who has like a frost trap that I think is quite similar to this. But I absolutely love this idea. Now, whether anyone else would love this idea is a question. I think, personally, it's just me who likes this, as generally stun mechanics are widely hated amongst everyone who's ever played a game ever. What better class for this to be on than Scout as he could use his speed to get behind the enemy lines and put it in sneaky places where you wouldn't expect. However, this could also lead to some spawn campery, and whether you get this thing back from ammo packs or you can only get it from the resupply couplet is also not answered. But to the person who submitted this, I can't remember who, I absolutely love it, but I don't think anyone else would. So the clap trap, I actually quite like the idea of this. It could be really annoying to fight against, and someone like Heavy, for example, would have a huge disadvantage when he gets trapped in this thing, as he'd have to rev up. And the single hit high damage classes would be really good at getting away from this. Demos and soldiers would still take blast damage, like I mentioned earlier. But I honestly don't know where to put this thing. I'm. Mm, Ooh, I want to put it in a bit too good. You are giving up the significance of the pistol for this. Then at the same time, this is incredibly strong and could also be incredibly annoying to fight against. The next weapon on our review today is the Gaslighter and I'm going to be honest with you, I actually had to look up what this term meant as I don't have Twitter and I've constantly been told I'm doing it to people, but I don't think I am. So this thing is essentially the most complex air blast flamethrower you'll ever lay eyes on. So air blasting someone with this thing applies the gasoline effect and air blast projectiles upon hitting the targets also applies the gasoline effect. Knocking back someone with the air blast applies a flat 35 damage which I think is a really interesting concept. All this comes at the cost of 15% fire damage penalty, an extra 150% air blast cost and the fact that your air blasts cannot extinguish teammates and air blasted projectiles do not mini crit. So this is the same as the first one we covered in which this is either incredibly good or incredibly bad. I cannot tell which one it is, and I'll have to let you decide, but essentially the idea of applying gasoline to everything is probably very strong considering the fact that you only have a 15% fire damage penalty, yet you can always get the full afterburn. Reflective projectiles not mini critting seems fair, this is also something I suggested way back when when I made an air blast flamethrower video. But then again, some of the wording on this thing is also off, like I don't know what a colliding with players hitbox is, but um, oh well. Either way, this is a really cool concept, but I think it's probably a bit strong as is. So, while the gas lighter seems incredibly overpowered, I don't think it's really that much as such. It's essentially just the fifth or fourth weapon idea for a air blast flamethrower. I already tried to cover this beforehand. I'm going to put it in a bit too good, purely because of the afterburn and the gasoline. But, I really like the idea of this thing. I really, really do. It's fantastic. Next up we have the Wild Warden, and I've had many requests to cover, uh, like, well, revolvers for the Engineer. So I won't be covering all of them, I'll only be covering the best ones. This thing deals much more damage against the target that your sentry is also firing at, and it essentially has longer range as the damage falloff doesn't start for much longer. This comes at the cost of having 140% less max secondary ammo on wearer, and the minus 50% clip size. So that humongous 140% minus you know, secondary ammo, that's only because the engineer's pistol typically has 200 reserve ammo. So that might sound like a huge debuff, but don't worry about it. This thing is a cool idea, it's a cool idea for a pistol, however it's not the most fantastic idea in the world for a revolver. A revolver is going to have a slower firing speed, that this thing has not listed. So while it's meant to be a revolver, it really should be a pistol instead. I have no clue what minus 140% max secondary ammo on the wearer would look like, but essentially because the engineer's pocket is so incredibly huge, this would make sense. And this is a revolver, so it's only going to have 6 shots. I really like the idea of taking the Widowmaker's stat of dealing extra damage to your sentry's target. The fact that this thing has more range is pretty cool. I'm going to put this in good, because generally it's not as strong as you think because a sentry is going to be killing the target regardless, unless of course it's a mini sentry. The high voltage is a Frankenstein together laser kind of detonator thing for the pyro. This thing possesses possibly the single worst stat I've ever seen on a weapon ever. A 50% chance to deal a critical hit versus burning players. So that means half of the time 
this weapon just straight up doesn't work, and the other half of the time, it's a direct upgrade to the flare gun. So by holding down the right click, you can charge and release a plasma ball that deals several amounts of damage when it either hits a player or hits a wall. This is a really cool idea, and it's essentially like a reverse detonator, or like a detonator 2.0, and it even shares a very similar model. And I thought I'd just show this as well, the person who submitted this also submitted this little graphic, and I think that's a really cool idea. Little touches like this go all the way and they have a much higher chance of making it into the video. But in terms of the stats on this thing, this is just plain and utter awful. It is quite literally that first stat that ruins this entire weapon. Half of the time it's a direct upgrade to the flare gun, and then half of the time it's only just a charged plasma thing that's worse than the detonator. So with this thing essentially being the reverse detonator, I really like the idea of. However, 50% chance to critical hit burning players, I don't think that should be there to begin with. And, well, I just, I don't know, I'm really confused about this thing. So I'm probably going to put it into a bit too good. Probably. Actually, I've thought about it and I'm going to put it into complete need of rework. Next on our list, we have the Iron Force. So this is essentially a lot like the Lock and Load, except it mini crits upon airborne targets. And this thing also has the infamous stat of an extra 20% damage bonus. This all comes at the cost of a minus 50% explosion radius and 25% clip size. So I thought we'd learned previously that giving the Lock and Load a flat damage buff was not a good idea. Now I do want to do a video essentially reworking the Lock and Load, as I do think it should be the direct hit slash reserve shooter of Demo Man. However, this idea here is not the way to go about it purely because of the plus 20% damage bonus. That is a horrific idea, get this thing off my screen. I've been saying for a very long time that this is what the lock and load should be, and I really want this thing in the game. Whether it's, you know, the lock and load, or whether it's just something else, I really, really want it to be added. 20% damage bonus is maybe a bit strong. But then again, you know, the reduced clip size, the explosion radius, all that kind of stuff. If we were to remove everything else and just give it the mini crits on target, then I'd really want it. Maybe we'll put it into good, but that's as basically as close as balanced as we're going to get. And today, for our last one, I leave you with the single most confusing and weird idea we've ever been submitted. So this here is the jump in the jar. This thing grants immunity for three seconds. And if you splash this on your feet, you'll get 100% jump boost for 5 seconds. I'm going to assume the immunity part means full damage immunity, but just having immunity in general is a really funny stat. This comes at the cost of not being able to affect other players, and you can't carry the intelligence or the pastime jack while this is active. So, giving a jump boost to snipers is a very interesting concept. On one hand, they could get to much higher off places than they normally could for better sniping, but then on the other, some of their main counters like scouts and other snipers are still going to be able to reach them. I don't know what sniper possibly could have been eating to give him a jumping can in a jar or something, unless he was eating like spring beans or something, but I don't know, it's very confusing. Overall, this is a very, very interesting idea. While the wording of this thing is entirely off, I really like the concept of it. I'm actually going to put it in a little bit weak, because what's a sniper really going to do with a jump boost? Yeah, getting to higher places is nice, but Scout, one of Sniper's best counters, can already do that better than him. And I'm going to leave you with that for today. Like I said, these videos are going to start to get longer, however, the only reason this one was longer is because I had the massive amount of disclaimers to make at the beginning. We managed to cover 7 weapons this time instead of the usual 5, but the next video I promise you will be covering 10 weapons. People seem to really like the idea of getting on a YouTube channel, even if it's just for one video, which I completely understand. You know, when I was younger, I would have freaked out as well if I were on a YouTube video. Yes, I, I feel like I need to tell everyone I'm not some special... I'm, I'm just a boss to do far too much time on his hands. But if you appearing on this channel makes you happy, then I'm more than happy to oblige that request. The only other thing I want to mention is that I've seen so, so many comments recently telling me to slow down on the content production because otherwise I'm going to get burnt out. Like, I've seen a surprising amount of comments saying this, and I want to say I'm very grateful for all your consideration. I will take this into account, and there will most likely be a no upload tomorrow, as I've uploaded today, and I had a double upload yesterday. So, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to get burnt out anytime soon. I have a huge list of things I want to do, huge list of videos I want to make. Content will be coming for much longer to come, don't you worry. Thank you very much everyone for watching, and I'll see you later down the sunny road. Cheers. Cheers.